Welcome to the Brit Asia podcast, White Room. Now, you know, these are real conversations with, you know, your artists, your influencers, and those that you guys want to hear stories about. And today I'm joined by, you know, Jaggedy. Jaggy, what's going on? All good, man. All good. Bro, let's go straight to it, man. We've got a lot to talk about. And firstly, look, I appreciate you coming on and having these open conversations. Because look, if we don't have open conversation dialects, it, it becomes the same narrative amongst every artist. And as an industry and individuals, we can't move forward mm -hmm. unless we can't talk about, you know, things that have gone on and going on, etc. Mm -hmm. But let's kind of take it from the start, right? You've had like an event for, say, two, three years. And the elephant in the room is, you know, you hit an all-time low. Yeah. If it's, if, 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 if it's fair to say, right? You hit an all-time low. Mm -hmm. And this all-time low kind of, it didn't just open eyes up to just you. It opened eyes well, up to- I, I wouldn't say it was an all-time low. What ha the repercussions of what happened yeah. made me go to uh, rock bottom. Okay. Um, and, you know, uh, things that had happened, they were due to, you know, mistakes yeah. that any human being can make, yeah. which I had made. Um, and, you know, as a result of that, uh, we are here talking about it. Um, and addressing um, how we can move forward from things that put you in a position do you think where our, you think you can't come back Do you from. think in our, in our community especially, right, mm. mistakes are kind of... People forget we're humans and mistakes are made. It's a case of if someone in the limelight makes a mistake, it's let's throw the kitchen sink at that person. Don't take a step back and kind of I evaluate what's caused that person to get there. It's less throw the kitchen sink at a person. Of course, our, our and less, community- And less help after. Yeah. Well, our community is, is known for um, that in a, in, a, in a huge way, yeah. right? They, um, they love knocking people when they're doing well. They love pulling people back from achieving um, great heights, you know, um, and doing well in their industry or whatever. You're always going to get haters, and it's not just our uh, our community. It's it's across the board, right? But our community is quite bad for that. Um, and you're right. They do they do love knocking someone when they're down, right? Rather than helping them, and and especially with you know with the way that the industry is, and not even just the industry, the way that. Um, the, the world that we live in now with, with phones and social media, everybody wants to make videos now like about stuff rather than help somebody. You know, you might see someone fall over or um, cut their knee open, right? First, help exactly. It's like, what is going on? Like, well, the, the people, the way they're, that they're thinking is completely changed now, right? Um, so going back to um, helping people, people don't want to help nobody. No, right? You got to help yourself. Right, you got you got to just remember that nobody does nothing for no one. Yeah. You you come here alone and you go alone. Right, whatever you do is is your is down to you basically while you're here. You know, um, and it's inevitable that we're all going to make mistakes at some stage of our life. Some people have made them. Some people are yet to make them. You know, um, and yeah, we are all human beings, and and we learn from our mistakes. You know, um, I made mistakes um, along the way, uh, and you know, I I went through a time in my life where um, I was at complete rock bottom after everything that happened. You know, I was um, in a, in a position where I was even having suicidal thoughts. You know. Uh, because I didn't know what to do and how to deal with it. I had no idea. I thought my career's over, yeah. okay? Um, I thought, this is it, this is game over. I don't know what, what else to do. And I actually got even worse. I hit the drink even harder. You know, I was doing stuff that um, I look back at now and it makes me cringe, And but I think, how did I even get there? You know, but that's how, that, that's, that's normal. That's normal for things to happen like that. And, and the way you deal with that and how you come back from that is the tough part. Before we kind of talk about kind of what happened and what led to it, right? You mentioned kind of, you know, you thought that was rock bottom. You turned to booze even more, et cetera, et cetera. But it was, is there just a lack of support network for men when they're in circumstances? Like, do men have that lack of support where we can't just call up your boy and be like, you know what, I'm going for a hard time. Or call up a boy, because it's that male pride and ego of like, how does a man talk to another man about feelings and emotions without being like judged? So, I think it's, um, 
there's definitely a lot of help out there, okay? Um, I know that because I found it and I used it, right? And um, I'm in a much, much better place today than I was two years ago, right? Um, and the thing is with um, people from an Asian background, I think pride and ego has a massive thing to do with it. You know, for them to accept that they have a problem, for them to accept that they are going through a rough time, to, to openly talk about that, it is very difficult for people um, from our community. They find it degrading, they find it belittling, they find it just just so tough to talk about that they rather keep it and try and deal with it themselves without seeking help. But you're not gonna get better then. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna come out of that uh, out of that rut that you might be in, that um, vicious circle, the fighting of the demons. You're not gonna if if you're in there, you're not gonna be able to kind of work your way out of there unless you go and get help. And there's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of help out there which a lot of people don't know about, and a lot of a lot of the help out there isn't talked about enough for people to know about it. You know, um, I. Um, now that we're talking about that subject, I went to um, I went to AA, right? I'm on the 12 step program. I'm over 500 days sober. Um, and I'm in a way glad that what happened happened because it's made me a much better person today, you know? And um, sometimes you have to hit rock bottom to uh, progress in life. You know, when you get to a certain place um, where you think there's, you can't come back from there, man, you can come back from anything if you put your heart and your mind to it, you know, and you get the right help. You can come back from anything, man. Ne nothing is impossible. Everything is possible. You, you mentioned like a really big word, and that's suicide. And that's something that we don't talk about as a community enough. Mm. Like, what was going through your mind to kind of think that suicide is an option? Because that's the... It might like that's an extreme end on yeah, the spectrum. Yeah, it's just when you when you feel like you've had enough of everything, you know. Um, uh, for me, it was like I, I just there was there was days where I was in in such a dark place that my favorite time of the day was going to sleep because when you're asleep, you're practically dead, right? Until you wake up. So it was at some points it was like I would rather not wake up. When I go to sleep, I would wish that I wouldn't wake up just to get away from all the stuff that I was having to deal with. But that's your mind telling you that it's so tough, right? When it's not actually that bad. You can come back from anything, you know? If you put the work in and you seek help, you can come back from anything. And I'm living proof of that, you know? Um, there's a, there, there was a situation where, you know, um, I have kind of been through many times over the years where I, if I have a drink, I'm not then in control, okay? Um, I don't have uh, control over myself. Um, and only people that have been in that situation will really understand this. People that haven't will probably go, okay, yeah, he's talking crap, right? Because they don't understand it, right? Because they don't have a problem with it. So to them, this ain't gonna be a problem. But for somebody who's been in this problem or has this problem 10 times worse than I do, will know exactly what I'm talking about, right? And when you have no control over your, uh, over what you're doing, then you can, make any, you can make any mistake, right? Because you're not, you're, you're, you're powerless, right? And that's what would happen to me. Like, and I never looked at it until I went to AA. I never looked at it that I was an alcoholic or people think that being an alcoholic is somebody that drinks 24 seven, 365 days a year. That's not the case. Being an alcoholic is somebody that, that has a problem with alcohol after just one drink. Because you have a problem with it, that is, you know, you having alcoholism. There's a problem with that, and you need to you need to address it. You need to accept it, and you need to deal with it. Um, and where it can go is down to each individual. What happens after you have that first drink can go from one extreme to the next. You know. Um, and I got caught up in in some some messed up stuff, and um, you know, it's it's just I'm I'm just very very grateful that I'm here now to be able to talk about it um, sober. 
um, and share the message that there is help out there. You, we spoke about something kind of off air, which was the events that kind of led up to you being in India, mm. when essentially you were using mind altering substances, mm. right? But talk me through the whole what happened in India, because I think that like, that's a big part of the story that people don't understand. It's it wasn't that you was there in India for like a jolly up per se. No. It was, you was there based on circumstances which made you stay there longer than you had to stay there. Yeah. And environment played a big part. Absolutely, absolutely. So I went there when it was, um, when we were at the peak of COVID, uh, but India was still open. And I'm very fortunate. I'm one of very few artists that gets a lot of work in India. I do a lot of shows in India, year in, year out. I've been going there for the last 20 years, you know, um, and India has been amazing. It's been really good to me. And, um, you know, it keeps everything moving for me. So um, I went over to India and I stayed there. And th that, that, the plan was that I was going to stay there for three or four months while, you know, there was no work here. There was no gigs. Everything was shut down. Even, you know, restaurants starting closing down and it was just dead here. Like people were messaging me going, what is going on in India? Like, like is there... Is there even COVID happening there? Like, you know, because we were everywhere. We were, we were doing shows, we were out at restaurants and bars and um, the, the whole place was just carrying on like nothing was going on. Um, so when I went there, initially I was, I was sober. And everybody that was around me are very well to do. Everybody drinks, you know, and there's only so much that you can say no to someone, right? So like, um, I would, after the first couple of weeks, like, you know, people would ask, oh, buddy, you want to have a drink? Let's have a drink. I'm like, no, I don't drink, man. I don't drink. And after a certain period of time, I was like, you know what? There's, there's nothing else actually to do, but just join them now. So that was my, I guess, my kind of relapse in a way that I, I, I got back on the drink. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And, um, you know, I, I, I got into a position where, you know, things happen which shouldn't have happened. I hold my hands up to things um, uh, that did happen. Uh, there was, you know, certain things that I did, which I, which I regret um, well, everything that you do when you're not in control. You will then wake up the next morning and go, what the hell happened? You know, why did I do this? Why was I involved in this? Oh my God, what, what a mess, you know? But it's too late then, right? The only thing you can do is, is when you wake up the next day is correct what you've done wrong and work towards a better future, right? You can't, you can't look back at the past. If, you, if you're carrying the bricks from the past, you're gonna build the same house, right? So you gotta move on with a positive attitude. Um, so, you know, time goes on and uh, I was there and pff, mate, you know, it just, it was, it was a bad time, man. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and uh, defend myself from it. I, I messed up, I was, I, was in a, I was in a bad place. Um, and drink played a big part of that, you know, and it led to led to a lot of uh, uh, things happening which which shouldn't have happened. But you know, I look back at that now, um, and if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be in the place that I'm in today, where I'm, you know, in a in a much much better position. I'm over 500 days sober. I don't smoke. I don't eat meat. I'm a pescatarian. Um, I'm working on new music. Uh, my family's good, and and that's purely because of what had happened at that time. You know, I hit rock bottom, but I came back from it. And the comeback is always greater than the setback if you work on it correctly. Do you think, like, let's talk about the kind of the music industry, and uh, yeah, let's, 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 let's don't say music, let's say entertainment, because the music industry is kind of smaller, but entertainment is wider. But in the kind of Asian Punjabi music industry and entertainment industry, do you think there's a massive issue of drink? and mind yeah, altering substances is. that we uh -huh. aren't addressing because you know you're someone that's come out and openly admitted it and you worked through it but there's those that probably don't understand that they have a problem and they're stuck in this circle and as far as we're aware they need help but they're not seeking help yeah i mean you know what that that's just a very open-ended question how many people are struggling out there you'll never know until they come forward right um but it's in, in entertainment that is, you know, it, it's there. Yeah. Uh, drink, drugs, smoking, you know, all of that kind of stuff is there. You know, people are part of a, a culture which has been there from day one, you know. Um, and what you do when you're around it is your choice. You know, some people get caught up in it. Some people choose to do it. 
some people do it and completely deny that they do it, you know. Um, and there's a lot of, in, in, in the Punjabi industry especially, there's so many people that will come on there and go, Nini mata pindani. And we all know they do, right? But it's like this whole thing about saying that I don't because it makes you look good. But then you come on, uh, I don't know, you know, you'll be seen at a party and you're completely wasted. And it's like, hold on a minute, I thought that guy didn't drink, you know? And it's like, well, if you drink, say you drink. So what? No one cares. No one actually cares if you drink or not. Like, so why is this the whole thing that you have to say on air that you don't drink? You know, I, I don't, I don't get that. That part, I don't just don't get about it. Um, but anyway, that's each to their own and they, they can say what they want. But um, yeah, there is definitely a big problem. Uh, people have issues. Um, and I know that for a fact because, and I'm not going to mention any names, but when I put up positive posts on my social media on where I am in my journey now, I get so many messages from people saying, bro, good luck to you, well done to you. Where can I get help? What can I do? Can you help me? You know, shocking amount of people that are going through the same stuff, man. And and are now finding it easier to talk about it because I've actually made it quite public that, yeah, I had a problem. I put my hands up um, and, you know, we, we should quite, we should normalize it. If people have got issues, man, address them. Go speak to someone. Speak. I don't think there's the, like all of all of us um, have got friends that probably have got a problem, right? But you'll never know unless they make it a point of talking to you about it. But like you said before, someone might not want to just pick up the phone and admit to you that, bro, I've got a problem. And that's probably just because of pride and ego, because of all you know the fact that they can't, they can't, they think they can't live a life without having a drink. Because I know people that would go, nah, but how do you go out now? What do you mean? Like, like if you're out like, and you're not drinking, isn't it boring? Like, that's what people say. Like, they think that just, go, you have to, yeah, have a drink to have a good time. I'm like, nah, you don't, man. Yeah, it's the company, but it's your headspace. It's like, if you feel that you need a drink to have a good time, then that's, that's quite sad, man. You know, that's quite sad that you're in that position that you, Maybe that's an insecurity. Maybe you feel more confident once you've had a drink and then you're okay, you know, and, and that's why you do it. There's, there's hundreds of reasons. Everyone's got their own reasons, man. But I think, yeah, definitely we should, we should openly talk about it a lot more just so it makes other people that have got issues um, a bit more comfortable about talking about it and getting help. Yeah, let's talk kind of the comeback in itself. You know, you dropped new music, but I think one thing that you was very, very vocal about was Nagina, the song. Mm. You know, just 21 years. We didn't celebrate 20 years, but yo, congratulations on obviously Thank 20 you. years of song. But the melody, except for lyrics, made it into a big song with Diljeet. Yeah. And he was very, very vocal about it. Yeah. And oh. personally, look, kudos to you. You know, how many people would actually come out and speak and say, look, you know, that's my melody, etc., etc. You know, what happened with that? Because, you know, yes, you came out and said, like, you know, that's your song, you wrote it, composed it, etc. It was just bringing, raising, um, uh, you know, raising the, the raising the point and making it an issue because it was an issue. You know, you can't just pick up somebody's composition and their lyrics and use them without going through the right channels and getting the right clearing and you know doing the right thing. Um, and and that's all it was. Um, and I, I messaged um, Diljeet when it happened. Uh, I congratulated him on the song and I and I asked him. I said, but that section is is from my song so what's the deal with that like w w i wanted to know his take on it um and he said um that it was done with warner um and that speak to warner about it and i was like okay cool so i cleared it with him i spoke to warner warner the, the warner were very professional um and um they dealt with it in the right manner they they weren't aware that i uh, that we owned the rights and that it was our composition. They were told by somebody else that that third party had owned the rights. The African label behind Diamond Platinums was, um, they owned the rights to it. So they they sorted it all out with them, uh, which was not correct. So we, we corrected them um, and they sorted it all out. So it was it was an issue that needed to be raised um, and it got dealt with in the, in, the, in the right manner. So there's no hard feelings, you know, um, I ain't got nothing against Diljeet, um, 
you know, personally. Um, good luck to him with everything he's doing. He's doing great, you know, for Punjabi music. He's flying the flag. Um, and, uh, but this was, you know, it, this was my first song. So I wasn't going to just, you know, stay quiet about it. Um, I, I, we need to address the fact that we, we did that song first and it's been used. So we just need to be credited for it, you know, and, and the royalties need to be sorted out and, and stuff like that. And it was so, you know. Just a question on like royalties and clearance, et cetera, right? Because this, there's, there's a generation that don't, I wouldn't say even this current generation, even the, your generation onwards, they don't know what their rights are. Mm. What are your rights as nice? So if, if you've made a song, you've composed it, you've done the lyrics, et cetera and somebody else using it, what is the right channel to kind of get your rights or you're your claiming it? Well, do you have a claim? Of course you do. Of course you have a claim. If you are, if you are the writer and you've composed that track, you'll have some documentation or you'll have the song, which is proof. Your song is proof. Like in my case, we did the song in 2002. So it's there. It's, you can see the song. You can see that I've sung that track. You can hear the composition. You can hear the lyrics and it's exactly the same. So it wasn't difficult for us to, you know, correct them that, look, this is ours and we own the rights to it. We haven't taken it from anybody else. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it needs to go to lawyers and you've got to get lawyers involved and stuff like that. With Warner, it was very straightforward. We told them that, the, you know, this is this is ours. We own it. Right. And that was that was that was the channel that we went through. That was it. We spoke to them directly and they were like, OK, cool, fine. We understand that. We get that. Um, and uh, they, they corrected it, so they, they've credited us for that. But, um, I mean, you know, <laughs> there's new artists out there which this can happen to, and, you know, a lot of them might not be able to do anything about it because they don't really have, um, they don't have uh, paperwork to say that they've written that or they don't have um, a, a lawyer that can fight for them. You know, and it's going to cost money if they do, and they might just let it go. You know, so um, it, it's a, it's a it's not a difficult one. It's just you have to have those things in place. If you've got those things in place, you're you're entitled to um, getting your royalties, getting your um, clearing fee if they need to come to you to clear it. Um, but it all just has to be in place. Yeah. I think that's a good note to finish on. But it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Cheers, bro. Thank you.